Yeah. Hi everyone. We we'll, welcome back. We'll continue from where we stopped. Um, yeah. Just a moment. Yeah, so we were saying uh, that, you know, we can uh, have certain, like encourage believers in whichever way possible to engage in the world out there in different ways. So I just wanted to ask, because we, we're all from different churches, uh, do you have something like this going on where believers are engaging productively, constructively in the, in the world, sharing from God's God's principles for the workplace or anything else. You have something like that going on through your church. Or if not a program of the church, uh, it, it could be a ministry that the believer is engaged in. You could share that also. Okay, so Kennedy says yes. Uh, Kennedy, uh, you'd like to tell us how? Yeah, I can tell you, I can tell you, there's no problem. Yes, please go ahead. We have a compassionate ministry that is currently, because like in our church we have professionals, right? like we have doctors, we have nurses, we've come up with a compassionate ministry that we are going around uh, educating people on uh, life health skills and more currently we are doing more on the COVID-19. We are also having a program that runs on HIV programs for mothers and for young ones. We, we, we teach them the, post, uh, the after, after birth, how to manage and how to care for them. Then we are currently planning to run one for the youth who are out of college. Eh? that we can engage them positively. Yeah, and then you also have a uh, car wash business for them. We set up programs for them to keep them engaged. So that as we preach to them, they also have something to do that is productive in their lives. Yeah, thank you. Sure, thank you, Gandhi, that's good. So they're, um, they're showing the compassion and the love of God to people uh, in the name of Jesus. Right. So then uh, people, yeah, so similar to what we said, uh, bringing principles into schools, colleges, values, um, uh, and this is bringing God's compassion. So that's wonderful. Uh, thank you for sharing. Anyone else, anything else that uh, you have seen going on? So uh, when I, uh, you know, when I was in college, there were there were a couple who would run. Uh, they called it, uh, you know, like coffee house, but it was not really a cafe. It was just their uh, terrace. It was their house top. Uh, so they wanted to impact the lives of uh, young people. Uh, every Saturday, they would have a really engaging exciting program uh, and invite young people you didn't have to be a christian to come there but they would talk about you know things pertaining to self-esteem um, some saturdays would just be you know music it would be some kind of performing a performance going on but through it all you know uh, they they would share share the gospel towards the end and uh, yeah some some programs they didn't but uh, you know most of the time they would do that that if they don't do it directly then uh, the good thing was they, they used to build relationships with young people so you know it's a lot easier when they they know young people know you they're ready to share uh, their burdens with you just sit and chat in that manner, I know that you know so many, so many young people who were addicted to drugs, 
like they would share their challenges and then um, uh, you know i remember the the people who used to run the place they would try to get them help counseling support um, uh, and you know help with studies because some young people are not doing well in studies so there was opportunity to to serve in in different ways after making that connect but their um, initiative was kind of simple they just used to have that saturday evening program where anybody could come just have a, a good time have an enjoyable time learn some good things and go back home right so uh, that was a nice way of engaging young people because the same young people if you invite them to come to church they may never have the courage to come to church right so i <coughs> seen this couple do the coffee house and uh, it was so inspiring for me that you can do something like this and it's so different so in different ways like that like you can engage society you can bring the truth of god's word to people in their own way you know something that they are willing to receive and be blessed by uh, so uh, yeah do think about it pray about it you know you never know how god would lead each one of us to uh, open our hearts to serve people in different ways so uh, now quickly we look at the challenges uh, and then you know we can come back to the questions some of the questions that you all have so what are some challenges as i told us uh, the re research and study of god's word to know the truth regarding a matter especially difficult matters you know like uh, difficult matters like the other day uh, you know the fertilized egg for how how can you let a uh, you know fertilized egg die uh, fertilized and when it is an embryo at that stage that's a difficult question you really have to search scriptures to find out okay what does the bible say so there are such difficult matters uh, there can be matters regarding uh, you know things like divorce you know a certain certain arrangement or a scenario is divorce okay not okay it's di very difficult to answer some of these questions we really need the understanding of the word and the leading of the holy spirit like to be able to guide people correctly in these matters or what about you know matters of abortion when uh, you know the woman is is in a um, very difficult medical state and there is no other option but to abort the child like these are all very difficult questions how do we go about these things what does the bible have to say uh, so the responsibility lies on the part of those who teach the word we really have to understand what god's word is saying and you know how god spirit uh, is leading us and share the truth present the truth or then whatever the people decide uh, that's up to them but our responsibility is to present the uncompromising truth of god's word what about euthanasia right if uh, when people are suffering due to a prolonged illness and uh, if it also have if it accompanies pain and pain management is not very effective and this individual is living in pain for for uh, many days weeks months even years is it okay to take a decision you know whether to let them go what does the bible have to say very very difficult questions right but uh, we must trust god you know to to uh, help us unearth the truth from his word and present it to the people because people need to know what to do in situations like this because we want to live for god right and we want to live by godly values uh, so this is the challenge how do we find answers to questions like these and many others to help people uh, so yeah the, these are this is a, a very difficult thing but Uh, we can trust god and uh, delve into it and i'm sure we will be able to find answers okay to guide people then uh may, at many times in the world and you know in in the in christendom there can be some popular teaching or you know popular um something popular standard that that people want to follow but as a pastor and a leader 
right? We must not be swayed by what is popular. Instead, uh, we have to teach what God's word tells us. Okay? Uh, again, you know, things like um, prosperity. At, at some point, I'm sure, you know, uh, uh, back in Christian history, it was very, very famous, very famous. Um, uh, and at that time, like if you are pastoring the church and if you come under pressure to, to you know, not... Uh, if you rightly divide the word of God, maybe a lot of other pastors might tell you, hey, what are you doing? You know, Let's preach it this way. Uh, but we have to stand up. It's popular to preach you know, prosperity the way uh, it's being taught, but I'll stick by God's word. We go by God's words. I'm just giving you one, one example, but there can be many such topics that uh, people like, uh, like to hear about. And uh, when we are not preaching, Right? Or we are not doing things uh, the way uh, others in Christendom are doing. Even our congregation might say, Pastor, why are you not doing it like this? But we have to uh, stand up and say, hey, no, this is what we believe. This is what we've been preaching all along. And this is what we will continue to preach even now because we've examined and this is the truth of God's word. So popular opinion, we should not let that um, uh, bend us on certain issues then. Um, yeah, uh, the other thing here is uh, the voice of compromising Christian leaders. So again, you know, this is similar to a popular opinion. We can have some very well-known voices that speak contradictory to the truth. Okay, let let's say homosexuality. I've heard, you know, some very popular preachers say things like, uh, yeah, you know, what's wrong with that? Uh, we, we are in the 20th century, we're in the 21st century, uh, and uh, truth evolves. You know, I've heard statements like these uh, from some men of God whom I have followed for years, okay? Uh, and it, it's very disappointing. It's discouraging to know that they're willing to uh, compromise on the truth of God's word. So when we hear someone who has a voice speak things like this you know are we going to succumb to that pressure or uh, okay maybe i am not as um, well known as you know that particular individual but still the truth is well known the truth is um, constant that's not going to change so i am going to say what the word says no matter what the so called popular individual is saying or the famous individual is saying so you know these are all the challenges but as long as we are aligned to um, the word of god i think we'll be fine whatever issue we face okay so now just coming back to uh, some of our practical questions here um, so samuel uh, your question on the mark of the beast right i think i'll say one thing otherwise it's like you know leaving it hanging till you have your class uh, in the next semester uh, so see one one thing is uh, it's in Revelation 17 and uh, verse, sorry Le Revelation 13 and verse 17. I'll post it here. Verse 17. Yeah. So it says that no one may be able to buy or sell except one who has the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name okay so there again it's pretty clear that you know it has to do with business so uh, if you look at the covid vaccine i don't think you know it's the standard for business like you don't use being uh, vaccinated uh, to buy or sell okay so uh, you know, I'm just going by this one verse, and even that I think clarifies uh, to me that you know the COVID vaccine is not the mark of the beast. Yeah, but there are so many other points that you will consider uh, as you go through the course on the end times eschatology, which will also uh, you know uh, explain further to you that uh, uh, we're really talking about you know something that will have to do with business. Okay, uh, that is the mark of the beast. So the COVID vaccine is not. So just a very small point there for now. Yeah. I hope it's okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Ma'am, Sam is not connected. Yeah, yeah um, he's not connected. Yeah, I, I realized. I realized he's not connected. Okay. Anyway, so if he sees the recording later, then yes, that is one point for him. Uh, now, coming back to other questions. Um, is Beth on the call? Yeah, Beth. So, uh, Beth, uh, uh, I know you asked the question in the Kingdom of God course, uh, but the answer to the IVF fertilized eggs, right? Um, yes, according to the Bible, when uh, you know the the um, the egg is fertilized, okay, or we we'll, we we'll call it the embryo. Right from that stage, it's a person. It's a person, uh, and so the value placed on the embryo is as if you know we we are talking about a person. There are you know scriptures the way God spoke to Jeremiah. He said, "While you know you were in your mother's womb, uh, I I knew you." Um, okay, let me just share. Maybe I'll just share some references. Yeah. Okay, so uh, David, you know, in Psalm 51 and verse 5, uh, he says, I was brought forth in iniquity and sin. Um, in sin, did my mother conceive me? Conceive me. So right from the moment of conception, right, it's a person. It's a person. Uh, there were two nations struggling within Rebecca's womb. Now, they were not even born. Talking about Jacob and Esau, Genesis 25, verses 22 to 23, they are people. Okay, They are people with a destiny and a future. So we don't look at an embryo as, uh, you know, I mean, um, you understand, right? Like there's value placed on it as per God's word. The baby in um, Elizabeth's womb, okay, Luke 1.44, uh, leapt for joy. We read about that when she met Mary. So the embryo is a person and uh, in IVF, now, uh, you know, we really have to look into this. When multiple eggs are fertilized uh, and, you know, the other, the fertilized embryo is, is uh, uh, sort of let to die, actually scripturally, uh, you know, that is not biblical okay that is not biblical now um, i i don't know too much about the exact process which they use do they do they fertilize the eggs and then they pick the one which is thriving if the others kind of naturally uh, don't make it uh, they only pick the one which which makes it and then they implant it in the in the mother's womb now that is that would be different but uh, if you know one is picked and the others are let um, you know, to kind of self-destruct or whatever. Uh, I don't know if that would be <laughs> that would be right by the standards of God's word. So that's my understanding as of now, Beth. Yeah. Uh, is that okay, Beth? Okay, great. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now uh, Sam is back. So Sam. Uh, on the matter of uh, uh, civil disobedience, uh, and your question here, it uh, also has the specific instance of, um, so hypothetically you're saying, how does a church make a stand, perhaps a hypothetical scenario to discuss, what if the government, government makes gay marriage within churches mandatory and any church refusing to do so will lose their privilege to fellowship? Maybe not the best scenario, but something to, to get us thinking. Okay, so more specifically uh, with regard to gay marriage, and we know that you know that doesn't honor God, uh, the the homosexual lifestyle and uh, you know gay marriage. So we are very clear on God's word. So we will look at we will examine the standards in God's word for us. Okay, so what are the standards? I think um, uh, Tarun has talked about Daniel. One is that, uh, like homosexuality, that we don't we don't subscribe to it. Okay, so we cannot say yes to the government or something like this. So, what would we do? We would try to present our case. We would try to present our case, 
and we would uh, you know try to tell them that uh, this is what we believe uh, and you know we 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 cannot we cannot uh, change our stand and we will continue to do you know we'll continue to do what is right which is to not solemnize gay weddings now if that gets us into trouble so be it now when we look at the response which uh, uh, the apostles had in the book of acts right even addressing the sanhedrin uh, you have uh, peter and john they are being forbidden um, to use the name of jesus but at that time you know, they make a decision and they say that no we are not going to stop we are not going to stop preaching in the name of jesus so they make their stand very clear if the government is asking us you know to to make a compromise of this kind i think we can put our put down in the nicest way possible uh, and say that no we are not going to do it so if you're going to call that civil disobedience yeah i, I guess uh, yeah i don't think it's the, yeah <laughs> civil disobedience right so we see that in acts 4 and again you know later another place where uh, peter once again he says that uh, you know we can't stop preaching we cannot stop worshiping god so he gives this answer to the council um gamaliel is a part of it right so we have to put our foot down uh, and make us stand um, and not compromise yeah so does that does that answer your question uh, samuel yeah cool great okay fine so here abraham has uh, how about if is made compulsory okay so abraham if it is made compulsory for business yeah hello ma'am i mean um it's just like the same that brother charles has written so you can read his statement so that we can we can answer mm -hmm. okay 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 so uh, anyway i mean see at at this point you don't see that right it's like it's not compulsory for trade so uh, yeah i don't think we need to worry about it yeah okay so say life starts at conception yes Okay, Charles, is your day on what is your take on this day today? No mask, no entry tomorrow. No vaccine. Entry. It's on. Okay. So uh, we'll see tomorrow, Charles. That's my answer to that. Because at the moment I don't see a connect to it being the mark of the beast. Our issue is. that you know uh, that this should not be the mark of the beast right so yeah right okay uh, shri kumar um okay. yes yes uh, abraham please tell me yeah because here in vietnam i i was told that according to what they are saying uh, but i hope there is a rumor that hmm. if you don't have the vaccine then it means that you cannot work that's what they are telling us so it's like they are going around and um, uh what's the name uh forcing people to indirectly take the vaccine mm -hmm. so i also learned that the doctors and the nurses that do, they didn't have the vaccine they are not allowed to work so mm -hmm. indirectly it, it is working already but mm -hmm. just that the government has not made a statement of it being compulsory for now so i pray that it will not be so mm -hmm. yeah that's not because once they make it compulsory then it means that medicine has become compulsory and medicine is not compulsory it's my choice whether to um get medicine when i'm sick or not is my choice mm -hmm. so far as i don't have the sickness you cannot impose whatever you want to impose on me but if they want to make it compulsory then there's a question that i have to ask and we have to find out that's my take ma'am mm -hmm. sure sure uh, uh, charles oh, sorry uh, abraham yeah i i understand that okay mm -hmm. So okay, let me see if uh, I can write up something from the the, the content you know, or, or from eschatology and post on the screen. Yeah. So. Okay, mommy. Thank you. So yeah, much. I think that that will give us uh, a better understanding. Yeah. Sure. So we'll do that. Uh, Shri Kumar, uh, please go ahead. You have a question. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Um, 
first it is connected with the uh, uh, samuel's question uh, like uh, civil obedience uh, disobedience as you said uh, in case uh, like uh, in india when uh, they are uh, um, they are implemented uh, this uh, anti conversion law Mm. and um you know the um, how the things are uh, becoming more um, extreme uh, so in that case um uh, how we move ahead like you know when the anti conversion law and other things are happening so uh, how you how you how you just uh, you know help me out to mm -hmm. understand that one thing that uh, mm -hmm. because in some countries maybe that that thing is not there but even uh, when we uh, refer with the apostles time it was mm -hmm. not a law but it was actually I told them but it now it is like uh, legally it is um, uh, they are legalized it uh, in india like uh, they are make, bringing that anti conversion law and other things so then uh, how we can when we go ahead and share the gospel is it uh, are we disobeying the law i just thank you mm -hmm. okay sure yeah thank you uh, shikumar very pertinent question there so a couple of things Uh, that you know i i have come to understand so far see uh, we uh, as believers right uh, or people following any faith in our nation in india we do have the right to propagate our religion okay, so that is a constitutional right which we have been given okay so uh, when we preach when we teach and uh, you know when we share about christ to someone uh, or, or let's say you know there's a ministry and a church not none of that is illegal we are not engaging in any form of illegal activities okay so that is something that you know we have to be very very clear about so the constitution gives us that permission not just us but people of all religions it gives us that permission now yes in certain uh, states of india there is an anti conversion law okay so uh, what that law says you know we we have to examine it like by a state we have to examine what what they say but i i do understand that that law is more to say that you must not force someone you must not force someone uh, you know into into your religion and if you do then there are uh, you know repercussions so legally uh, the the uh, people are able to um, uh, sort of try you for it okay so there is this anti conversion law but you know it is also uh, something we observe that people may kind of i am using the term misuse so misuse that law uh, to kind of control people okay and, and say that uh, come on you can't preach you can't teach about god see as long as you're doing it as long as you're doing it uh, in a Uh, right way meaning you're not forcing anyone uh, it is people's free will you know you're careful about the age group like when people are being baptized you're careful okay this is an adult this is a full grown adult they can make their own decision and they have made their choice to accept christ so they have been baptized you maintain the certificate and also we go by the uh, law of the land so we follow you know if there's a church then Uh, we encourage churches you know to get your registration um uh, then keep your finances clean follow the process follow the legal process so you know as long as we are going by the law of the land and doing things right i don't see why we should not share or you know we should not um preach the gospel constitutionally we are allowed to do it constitutionally we are allowed to do it so uh, that is one thing that i wanted to say now uh, when there is persecution okay or uh, people are being threatened or harmed in various ways including physically um you know what should we do what should we do see there are different responses in uh, the bible and like we have to go by that now when there was persecution there were times when the believers actually escaped okay and if i'm not wrong there is uh, actually pastor has addressed this matter in 2008 uh, there there was a lot of unrest uh, and opposition right uh, kandamal you all remember kandamal in orissa and at that time he had preached a sermon yeah 
preach a sermon about uh, our response to persecution. So I think that will give you a more comprehensive, systematic answer to this question. But I'll just touch on some thoughts here. So sometimes it's okay to escape. You know, we read when uh, Paul was not accepted uh, in Acts chapter nine, uh, the the believers they get him to escape. They put him in a basket and they you know let him go out of a region because his life was in danger. So sometimes it's okay to escape. You know, even in his missionary journeys, you find that he he tries to escape some places because uh, there is an unrest and he could have lost his life. So it's okay to self-preserve and you know get out of the scene if required. Uh, so that is all right. Uh, but if we are being asked to do something, you know, against God, like in the case of Daniel, uh, he was asked to bow down to the idol of Nebuchadnezzar, and he didn't do that. He didn't compromise. Uh, sorry, Daniel and his friends. Different scenarios there, right? Uh, so. To worship the, the king was one thing and to bow down to the idol was another thing. But they stood their ground and then they said, we will not do this. So it's okay to do that when we are being asked to dishonor God or not to worship our God. Uh, you find in Acts uh, 4.19, Acts 4.19, uh, what does Peter say? One second, let me see here. Yeah, Peter and John, yeah answered and said to them whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God you judge. So they kind of going against what they are being told because they are directly being told you know, not to uh, worship God. So there are times we can take this kind of a stand and say no, you know, we will do what uh, we have to do and uh, if you, know, you, you want to take us to task for it, fine, so be it, you know, ready to give our lives for Christ. So there are times when we, we will have to do this as well. And then, yes, there will be times uh, under persecution where uh, we continue to do what God has called us to do with wisdom. Okay. Now, uh, it is sad to say, uh, Shikmar, that in some cases, people face opposition because of the way things are being done. You know, uh, like not following the law. One simple example, I think I, I told us the other day. Now, if there is a rule that you must not have speakers after 10 p.m. and you know someone's trying to conduct a crusade and keep the speakers on like post 10 p.m., they get in trouble. You know, and we can't call that persecution. Right? So a lot of such things are also happening. You know, very noisy gatherings in a neighborhood where people live, and then people say it's disturbing us. And, uh, you know, the, the believers say, oh, people are persecuting us, right? So wisdom, I think, is also very, very important. When we apply wisdom and try to do things the right way, don't give an opportunity for anyone to blame the ministry. Do it right to the best of our ability. Um, yeah, we continue, we carry on. Even though there's opposition, we carry on. Till a time that, you know, uh, we... we are stopped completely by people. So that's the third thing I would say. So it's okay to, to escape persecution. Second is to face it head on, right, for what we believe. Third one is just apply wisdom in the midst of persecution and carry on with the work because you're not doing anything wrong. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And please do uh, look up that sermon, uh, Shikumar. I think it has scriptures. Sure. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So say when Jesus told his disciples to leave the towns where they were escaped. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're not how good, how useful are we to God when we are dead? You know, you we really can't serve him, right? Uh, if we lose our life. So I think sometimes it's okay to be wise and just escape the scene if required. Yeah, thanks Say, for sharing that uh, uh, scripture here. Uh, Matthew 10, 23, uh, when they persecute you in one town, uh, flee to another town. Okay, For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Okay, uh, Kennedy, uh, yes, Kennedy, please go ahead.
Yeah, Kennedy, I can see your hand raised. You you want to say something? What I was asking you, huh? is it proper for a church to seek funding from non-believers or organizations to run their projects, mm. like construction of their daily programs? Is it proper? Is it because at times when yeah, at times when you when you follow these programs, you find that most of the donors they are either gay or they are not living a godly life. So they don't make good role models when it comes to maybe accounting for what the church has been given. Like the source of the funds came from somebody who's not a believer or is a gay person. No, they participate in other ungodly acts. Is it proper? Mm, okay. Yeah, is it proper to get money from an unbeliever? But uh, Kennedy, don't you think that we we can't really know where the money is coming from? For example, you know, for a building fund, if you let people know that you are in need of money, and then people start sending you bank transfers and all, would you be able to track every single person and find out whether that person is a believer or not a believer? What I'm saying in like in our case, eh? We run programs, okay. and there are cases where people can fund, you know, like mm. the AHF, you know, it's being funded by some organization. But when you find the CEOs of this organization, some of them are gay, you know, some of them are lesbians, but they actively participate in our program. So at times it's a challenge, you know, mm. because like when they fund a program, they can fund a one-year program, but, you, but when you come to look into their history, into the background of the organization, you find they practice what you, they practice what you have they go again is what you are teaching. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I understood now. Okay, so I think in that case, uh, it's better not to associate with such, uh, you know, people who have contrary standards. The church can just say no. Yeah. You don't have to take money from, you know, people who have, uh, if there's a, like a conflict of interest, their standards are different. You can just say that you will not receive funds from, you just refuse. Say, okay, we don't want. Okay, that way our stand will be clear. Right? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, then the king supplied Nehemiah with resources needed to rebuild Jerusalem. King was not for me. Yeah, so but see, the thing is, unbelievers can fund. There's, there is no problem with that. But what Kennedy is pointing out is he's saying, uh, you know, visibly contrary standards. There are agencies which stand for the opposite of what the church stands for. So when they are aware of something like that, I think in that scenario, we could say no. Okay, but otherwise, if you see, you know, the earth belongs to the Lord. You know, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, and also scripture says the wealth of the wicked will be given to the righteous. So yeah, great. If money comes in, uh, uh, even from unbelievers, it's great for the church. But because what Kennedy is saying, the church has noticed that people have contrary standards. So when you notice something like that, I think it's better to refuse than to take. So that's what we are saying. Yeah. So yeah, I hope uh, that that is uh, okay, Beth. Is that okay? With you? Yeah. So, yeah, Beth, everywhere people have contrary standards. What, what we're saying is, okay, let's say um, uh, there is a church building fund, okay, and uh, we need X amount of money. Uh, now, there is a, there's an organization, a very big organization. And they are all for, you know, gay rights and gay marriage and uh, something that the church does not, that's not the church's standard. Now, if they say, okay, we have big money and we will give you 50% of your, uh, you know, X by 2, we will give it to you. Don't worry about it. Now, when we know that this organization has this standard and they are coming forward to fund the church and the money will come from them to build the church, so I'm saying... In a situation like that, it's okay to say no. Now, if we don't know, right, like 
what those uh, you know who who those people are and then because now let's say uh, for example we have a building fund people just stands for money people who attend church people who have been blessed by the church now it's hard to tell right where the money is coming from it could come from other parts of the country and we don't know who these people are what their standards are so in that scenario i understand it's okay people are sending that's okay but when there is a contrary standard very clear opposing what the church says in that situation it's better to refuse yeah and also if they impose their certain criteria okay so uh yeah but i think i that's my stand uh but yeah i i let you have your view okay sure thank you all right can we uh can you wanted to say something no no i'm okay i'm okay, okay. thank you okay great great yeah uh class so i, I think we've tried attempted to uh, address some of your questions i don't know if i've been clear at all okay all these difficult subjects i, I took need to learn and be able to answer uh, more systematically so sorry if i uh, you know did not uh, communicate clearly um, or it's too um, you know long winded but uh, yeah hopefully i will try and um, make it clearer any anything else any other comments anything else we want to touch on before we close So yeah i think uh, we get the point uh the church needs to be the upholder of the truth the pillar of the truth and uh, not compromise even if we are under pressure and for that uh, we really have to spend time in the truth and learn what god's word says about different topics uh and with regard to the covid vaccine and how like i believe that it's not the mark of the beast but anyway you know i will post it on our stream page uh, my thoughts and then you know let's kind of uh, take it from there okay all right thank you thank you sanna okay then uh, let's close uh, today if we're all done i would just like to request one of us to please lead us in a word of prayer Okay, just take over and say we start the work of it. Okay, it's open to anyone. Please feel free to unmute yourself and lead us in prayer, please. Pastor, can I pray? Yes, yes, Shri. Please do. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you and honor you, God, for this wonderful day which you have given to us. We thank you for this entire week. lord master how you carried us and lord master how you lord master taught us with your word we just thank you we pray that father god today whatever we learn father god from from your servant oh father god we pray that let every revelation deeply rooted in us and let those words dwell in us all richly and let those those words oh lord transform our character and father god those words give us boldness to stand strong in the midst of the persecution let it give us boldness to preach the gospel of god let we not compromise with the circumstances of father god let we not compromise with the with the with the situations with the with the with the with our surroundings of father god we pray that give us that grace and wisdom and boldness lord to stand strong and let we never compromise with the truth oh daddy let we able to stand on the truth and also give us grace and strength and that 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 boldness to lord raise the church raise the youth raise the people raise the nation raise the body of christ lord so that they can also stand on the truth of father god 
Thank you, Father God, for this revelation. Thank you for this time of teaching. Let your peace rest upon us, O oh Father God, and bless, Lord Master, dear Pastor, and all the all the students, O oh Lord, who is with us, O oh Father God. Bless their family. Let they have a blessed week ahead, O oh Father God. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Shrikumar. Yeah, thank you, bless, thank you but, uh, yeah and uh, yeah god bless you everyone have a, a blessed weekend we'll connect once again next week okay and uh, yeah we'll continue to learn from god's word take care thank you thank bless. you pastor god bless you thank, thank you, you ma'am thank you thank you bye god bless you thank you god bless